Okay, so it's day two of quadrilaterals. You don't need anything for this lesson. I will tell you your assignment when we are finished. So let's start by doing a little review from yesterday. So this is a trapezoid. What are the characteristics of a trapezoid? Let me give you about 10 seconds to, to sit and think about that. The characteristics of a trapezoid. You can also refer to the note-taking sheet from yesterday if you like. A trapezoid has at least one pair of parallel sides. A parallelogram. What are the characteristics of a parallelogram? Sit and think about that for, a minute, for about 10 seconds. Refer to your note taking from yesterday if you like. A parallelogram has two pairs of parallel sides and it has opposite sides of equal length. A rhombus, what are the characteristics of a rhombus? Hmm. So a rhombus has two pairs of parallel sides, opposite sides of equal length, and it has four sides of equal length. All sides are equal on a rhombus. What about a square? What are the characteristics of a square? Hmm. So a square has two pairs of parallel sides. It has opposite sides of equal length, all equal sides, four sides of equal length, and it has four right angles. And a rectangle, what are the characteristics of a rectangle? Do, 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 do. <laughs> a rectangle has two pairs of parallel sides, opposite sides of equal length, and four right angles. All right, let's play a little game. Let's see, put me down here. Why is a square a rectangle, but a rectangle is not a square? This is a very, very important term that I need everybody to remember very closely. Why is a square a rectangle, but a rectangle is not a square? Think about this for a few seconds. Refer back to your note-taking sheet from yesterday. The answer is in the notes. Think about the characteristics of these two shapes. Why is a square a rectangle, and a rectangle is not a square? Well, a square is a rectangle, because it does have two pairs of parallel sides, as a rectangle does. It does have opposite sides of equal length, as a rectangle does. And it does have four angles, as a rectangle does. However, a rectangle is not a square because a rectangle does not have four sides of equal length like a square does. So there you have it. That is why a square is a rectangle, but a rectangle is not a square. Why is a rhombus a parallelogram, but a parallelogram is not a rhombus? Again, look back to your notes from yesterday. Think about the characteristics of both a rhombus and a parallelogram. Think for about 10 seconds. Do, 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 do. Okay, so a rhombus is a parallelogram because it has two pairs of parallel sides and opposite sides of equal length, both characteristics of a parallelogram. However, a parallelogram is not a rhombus because a parallelogram does not have four sides of equal length like a rhombus does. So there's your answer as to why a rhombus is a parallelogram, but a parallelogram is not a rhombus. All right, last question. Are all of these shapes trapezoids or are none of these shapes trapezoids and why? Are all or none of these shapes trapezoids and why? Uh, here I see a rectangle, a, tr uh, a rhombus, a parallelogram. I see lots of shapes. So are all or none of these shapes trapezoids? Hmm. All of these shapes are trapezoids because they all have at least one pair of parallel sides. A rectangle has at least one pair, a rhombus, a parallelogram, a square, and of course the trapezoid all have at least one pair of parallel sides, so they are all considered to be trapezoids. Last up is one thing that I'd like to share, something that I call a, the quadrilateral family tree. Take a look at it, study it. You'll notice at the top of the tree is that trapezoid, the shape that has at least one pair of parallel sides. 
all of the other shapes fall under the, the umbrella of a trapezoid. And we just talked about that in the last slide, right? And if you look down at that parallelogram, it kind of goes around in a, in a, in a loop in terms of char characteristics that the shapes share, okay? So you see that the parallelogram goes to the left to a rhombus, goes to a square, or it can go to the right to a rectangle and then onto a square. It's important to see the connection between these shapes and their characteristics because it also helps you distinguish one from the other, but also to know why one is not the other. All right, let's look at your assignment for today. I want you to go and print out and complete the worksheet titled Quadrilaterals Day 2, which I attached to the assignment post. And then I want you to spend some time working on IXL sections X.4, X.5, X.6, X.7, X.8, and X.9. I want you to spend at least 15 minutes on IXL today. See if you can do 30. If you finish those sections, you are free to visit areas that we, or concepts that we've already done. Bye guys.